Hello and welcome here to Volleyball here on NK Telco Sports. Clope and Nedek Minster welcomes you to this broadcast of High School Volleyball. We are at Minster Gymnasium where the Graham Falcons will take on the Minster Wildcats. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Keyhole Pizza, Precision Strip, Carriage Works, Minster Bank, Lincoln Electric Automation, Winners Meats, Orchard's Family Floor Center, and NK Telco. Hello, I'm Dave Kanapke. Along with me today is Brandon Coverman, and we're kicking off the volleyball season. What should be a pretty good matchup here between Graham and Minster. Graham, Brandon, they're coming off a pretty good season last year. 21-5, and five, and back-to-back -back years they've been in the district semis, and their goal really coming out of this tough Central Buckeye Conference is they want to get to the district finals this year, being a Division II school. This right outside St. Paris off of uh, State Route 36. They really want to challenge themselves. That's why they're coming in and playing teams like Minster out of the Midwest Athletic Conference. They're wanting to challenge themselves so that they can take themselves to the next level, try to get in the district finals in the regional round in Division II. Mr. Wildcats coming off a bit of a disappointing year. Last year, 10 and 15, that ended a streak of seven straight winning seasons. Coach Kamey Garman in her 12th year looking for improvement. They got a big, good core to work around, especially three juniors that played a lot of sophomores. I think Lily Barhurst is obviously going to be the one that centers this off, uh, uh, gets this offense centered around 269 kills last year for Barhurst. Look for her to really get her number called a lot. Four starters returning as well. Uh, Coach Garman mentioned it in the Cindy Daily News column where she said they had a lot of injuries last year. That helped them uh, get some more people, some more experience uh, that she thinks will benefit them in this season in particular. Yeah, only two seniors on this team led by defensive specialist Lindy Hemmergarn, who was libero last year. Also, I mentioned some of those returning now juniors, Kayla Lamb, middle blocker, and Megan Foreman. Those three played a lot along with the Lily Bar Horse. Uh, playing more of a 6-2 offense, Jaden Clooney was a I think a two-year starter it's at uh, the setting position. They always ran a 5-1 around her, but this year 6-2. Yeah, and you change up that offense and just got to work on the communication and the timing. And actually, Clooney will be one of our line judges today, so how about that? Uh, but it's just the change in pace, uh, knowing where to hit the ball, having good communication will be important, and should be a great matchup. We're really getting ready for the... National Anthem will pause shortly and be back with the starting lineups here on NK Telco Sports. been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. All right, welcome back here to Minster Elementary School for our varsity action here between Graham and Minster. About to give you your starting lineups. They are brought to you by oh, here's our starting lineups. First for the Graham Falcons. Emily McIntosh, 11, Taylor Kaiser. Now the starters, Eddie McDowell, for Mazzy Johnson, 17, Landry Balker, 19, Gretchen Boggs, Taylor Mars, and Whitney Faulkner. And Tegan Setti is the libero. Rafa, the head coach for Graham, 21-5 last year. 
Now the starting lineup for the Mr. Wildcats. First they'll be the non-starters. Again, 10 and 15 last year had a lot of injuries. They had a lot of players back. So optimism for the Wildcats going into this season. Now the starting lineup. Five, Lily Barhorst. Six, Kayla Lamb. Eight, Elena Pringer. Ten, Megan Portman. Eleven, Addie Inskeep. Twelve, Olivia Mesher. Libero, number four, Macy Pringer. Hey, Coach. Amy Garman in her 12th year, 150, 150 victories. Oh, well, we got a minute. Let's talk about our keys to the game, Brandon. Brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. We'll start with the Graham Falcons. Graham, they want aggressive and consistent serving. Uh, they need to have good serve receive. And they also are really keying in on out of system offense. That's for the Graham Falcons now for the home team, the Minster Wildcats. They also want to win the serve pass game. Uh, they want to play with a high energy and consistency, which is something, you, you know, the first game of the season that you're asking for uh, uh, you might not be the most consistent at times. And they also want to work as a team, get that communication done, obviously changing offenses here. So they want to work as a team here in game one of the season. Glad to have you along here on NK Telco Sports as all the volleyball teams kick off around Ohio today. Be interesting in this matchup, Brandon, both teams starting with a new setter. That's always interesting. To, like one of the keys is the surf and bass game. See how that works. Exactly. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But you know, credit Minster for even putting a team like Graham on the schedule. I mean, you always play in the MAC, so you're, you're guaranteed to get you know good competition out of most of your MAC games. But scheduling a, a team like Graham certainly. Give credit to the Wildcats challenging yourself early in the season. It really tells you where you're at so far within a, with a month into the season since starting practice. So starting it off will be Elena Pranger. She'll set out of the back row. She was a setter on JV last year as the referees are checking all the positions. Kim Egbert is the head official today. And the ball is to Elena Pranger, and we are about to start the volleyball season here on NK Toko Sports. Serve is dug across. Up there for the kill is Whitney Faulkner. I mean, just one, two, three. Easy start there for Graham. She was second team all Mad River Conference. They're in that division. Out of the Central Buckeye League is a hard serve there and a point. For Graham on the ace there is Tegan Setti. Graham again in the Central Buckeye Conference. They're in the Mad River Division. They were second last year, 21 and 5. Wildcats having some trouble. Waho is able to bump it across. Hit there by the lefty Mars. Bumped across there by Fortman. That will go long. Point to the Falcons. I'm just trying to get in system here. The thing is about Graham, so not very big. Just you can tell it through a couple points. Very athletic. Barhorse with the hit. Mesher will bump set to Barhorse. Big power, but a nice dig there by Setti. Free ball to cross. Just they got to break over the net, and it falls for a point. And sometimes you just need those little bleeders. Nice job there by Boggs, I believe, that hit that. On our first National Bank scoreboard, Graham off to a 4 nothing lead. That serve will go long. Side out to the Wildcats. Here you go. Take advantage of the air and go from there. That'll move a little ball horse, their big hitter, to the front row. Now serving will be the senior, Lindy Hemmelgarn. Last year she was a libero. This year looks like she's just a defensive specialist. So that serve goes into the net. Macy Pringer, number four, is a libero. Got a little bit of varsity action late in the season. Back to serve there is Landry Walker. Dug by Hemmelgarn. Hit on the right side. That is long there. Hit by Lamb. Another point for the Falcons. 
nice effort there to lay off there. It's a sliding libero there for Graham. Bocker with the serve. Set by Pranger. She sets it the ball or she powers it off the Bockers. You can tell why she had 269 kills last year. And she just jumps so well. Versace saw her play well in the basketball court uh, last year in her first kill of the season. Addie Inske comes in the front row. A promising sophomore was all MAC in during the softball season. Had a whole bunch of home runs. That is dinked across. Covered by Helmogard. They'll set it to Inskeep. That'll be called a double hit on this set. It's a point to Graham. Back to serve is Whitney Falk Faulkner. One of their better hitters. Almost three kills a game from last year. Second team in their division. Back set to Hemelgar and she tries to hit it. That will hit on the line for the point. Yeah, the Graham coach didn't agree with that, but called just inside just inside there by the line judge. So nice kill by Hemelgar from the back row. Number 22, Maddie McClurg checks in the lineup and also back to serve and set is Brooklyn Osterlo, just a sophomore. Played mostly freshman last year, but she's moving up to varsity. So Coach Garman playing a lot of players. A lot of ones will be rotating in or substituting them. That's good, too. You want to prompt that competition early in the season. Nobody spots safe. That hit by McIntosh goes into the net. 7-4. to four. In favor of the Falcons is Osterlo. We'll serve it. Dug there by Seti. Wrap back on the Graham side. They're able to save it. Seti puts it across. Ings keep. Osterlo. Bar horse. There's Seti with the dig. McIntosh with the hit. Inskeep able to get it across. Battle at the net, won by Inskeep in the Wildcats. You could have that as a block right there. Yeah. It was a nice play going up by Inskeep there to get the block. The termination point. Wildcats fighting back. Within two, seven to five as Osterlo continues to serve. Seti. All the way over to Marks. That never makes it over. Mars, I should say, not Marks. Wildcats within one. And again, again, nice response. After that little slow start, they have done really well. No timeout called by Coach Garmin. They're right back in this. Goes to with a hard serve. Dug there by Kaiser. They set McIntosh. Nice save by Pringer. Back on the Falcon side. Mars into the net. And the Wildcats tie it up at seven. Timeout on the floor by Graham. We'll step aside. Be right back on NK Tucker Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Welcome back, coming out of the Precision Strip timeout by Graham. Wildcats have tied it up at seven up. I mean, played really well. I mean, kind of a slowish start, a little sluggish start there by the Wildcats. But they fought and have really gotten Graham out of system here somewhat. A nice serve out of the timeout. Great serve by Osterlow, and it's a tough serve to sh serve it that short, and great placement there for the ace. Brooklyn, Brooklyn Osterlow has served about four or five in a row, and there's another hard serve. That'll go into the bench. Saved. McIntosh over. In the middle, Inski puts it away. Boy, now you can just feel the energy radiating from the Wildcats, and that serve game has been really important here these last few service points for Minster, and they're trying to keep the pedal to the metal right here. Inski played mostly JV last year, just a, little, a few games of varsity, and just a couple big hits as that one ends a real long and successful run of serving there by Brooklyn Osterlo. Trying to get a little cute there, I guess, by trying to hug it inside the line. Mars back to serve. Dug by Hamilgarn. That's that ball horse from the right side. 
They scramble Kaiser sets, not able to make it across. Side out to the Wildcats. So coming in for the Wildcats into the front row is Megan Fortman, junior. Played full time on varsity as a sophomore. As Barhorse back to serve. There we go, that's set. Ooh, nice save. Oh no, it goes outside the antenna. Yep. McIntosh almost saved, and the Wildcats now with a three point lead. They were down four nothing. Yeah, five right away. Something like that. Yeah. Barhorse, second team all MAC last year as a sophomore. That's hit. Ooh. This is off Pranger. Off of Pranger there. Mazzy Johnson with the hit. They weren't sure if it was to hit it or not. It was getting close to out of bounds. Side out to the Falcons. Serve across by Abby Duell. Fortland with the dig. Osterlo. Go back set in McClurg, and that's blocked. Nice recovery. Pranger was able to save the first one. On the Falcon side. Tipped over by Johnson. Yes, set Fortman. Megan Fortman puts it away. Nice job. The big gap as the Graham defense was kind of all sucked to the net. She finds the opening in the back line. Kayla Lamb will check in the lineup. Again, another junior played full-time varsity as a sophomore. She'll be middle blockers. The other middle blocker, Addy Innskeep, with the serve. That will sail along. Side out as Innskeep will leave in favor of the libero Macy Pringer. 12 to 10 here in our opening game of volleyball. We have a big schedule ahead on our NK Telco networks, and that will be a bad rotation by the Wildcats. As somebody was not at the right spot, Coach Garman asked where, and is. They knew what was wrong and they have it corrected. Serve across by Boggs. In the middle, Lamb not able to hit it across. Not sure that set ever made it above the net. No. And we are tied at 12. 12 to 12 on our first National Bank school board. Far horse from the back row for the ace, or for the kill, sorry. It's, it's nice when you can do stuff like that with a player like Lily Barhorse is mix up kind of the looks. You know, you, you play her on the left front, you set her behind the 10-foot line. Kind of confuses the defense and makes you worry just about another thing you have to worry about is where she's at at all times, even when she's in the back row. Lena Pranger into the game to serve and to set out a 6-2 offense. Hit there by Johnson. Free ball to cross. Chance for Graham. Goes by Pranger to Pranger. That'll be blocked back and out of bounds. Point for Graham. 13 to 13. Graham 21 5. The last two years they've been knocked out of the district semi. They're in Division 2. A pretty small in the Division 2, but it shows you what kind of. Difference in size is a little mix up there on the second hit. Point for Graham. Graham is mostly known for their wrestling program. Yes. And they've won, I believe, over 20 some straight state straight state championships. Yeah, I started to look it up and there was a lot of num big numbers there. And they, they get a lot of people from out of state will move to St. Paris, where Graham is located. If you're not sure where that's at, that's between Pickle and Urbana on 36, it's right along right on the north side there. Played a couple baseball games there. Yeah, they're usually pretty solid in their sports, but yes, definitely known for their outstanding wrestling program. There's a block back on the Graham side. It was set Mars for the kill is Mars. A couple Wildcats couldn't quite get to it, and Graham has opened up a three-point lead. Ever since that bad rotation, you kind of see Graham's confidence picking up here these last few service points. Tegan Setti, the libero, serves it out of bounds. A lot of power by the lefty, but pulled it, if you will, using a mm. baseball term. So Wendy Hemmergarn will check in to the lineup to serve. One of two seniors on the team, 
along with Kylie Williams, who's a front row player. Served by Helmogarn. Boy, that ball is moving all over the place for the ace. Yeah, talk about another baseball term. It was a knuckleball yeah. tight serve there from Lindy Helmogarn and the uh, the second ace of this set from Minster. While we're talking about baseball, I congratulate the Rushi Raiders on their state championship this past spring. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, they, you got a front row seat for that. And it's good to see the Raiders get the state championship. First time since 1971. Correct. Yep. It was fun to be a part of that staff and uh, to have a state championship. Very, very exciting. Uh, just a lot of good baseball in this area. A lot of good teams and can't wait for more good sports this year. Minster not able to get that over. Lead back to three. Bacher with a serve. Bad first hit. Springer's not able to dig it out. And now, biggest lead for Graham and a long time coach Carmen will call a timeout. We'll step aside in this precision strip timeout here on NK Tucker Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top of the line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top of the line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Coming out of this precision strip timeout, Graham has opened up a four-point lead, their biggest lead since early in the game. We saw Minster had their, got their mojo there for a little bit, and then out of, after that out of rotation that they had, uh, you've seen Graham kind of uh, recontrol things here. Minster's had trouble setting here a little bit. Uh, that's really helped Graham take control of this first set again. We said ball horse behind the 10-foot line. That will sail long. It's always a danger when you set far from the net. It's hard to get on top of it, so to speak, to, to fit it in, and that one stayed long. Hemelgarn, Pranger, Barhorse, point. Boy, see how much she hung in the air there. That set and her timing was a little off, but she was able to keep her body in the air for just long enough to hit down on that ball. Nice job. Definitely an athletic and strong girl and a much needed point for the Wildcats. Lane up, or no, Kayla Lamb serves it across. That's hit by Faulkner. Oh, no, no, no. That did not touch any Minster player there. We had the best view in here. And that should be a Minster point. The head judge is, looks like she's trying to get some help there. That's, that's the right call. It okay. touched nobody there on the Minster side. So... Uh, now that's Mr. Point. So the big thing they got it correct is yesterday, like you said, we had the angle right in front yeah. of us. It's always tough when you're officially, she probably yeah. didn't have a good angle on it, but she got some help and was able to fix it. And that's what you're supposed to do in that situation. Branger was set to bar horse. That goes a little wide, but they're really able to keep it on the floor. But no, they say uh, on the other side of the antenna, so side out to Graham. Uh, and from officiating sports for so many years, it's all, it really is all about that angle. Someone can see something from an angle, and you see it from the other side, and you're like, I saw something completely different from what you saw. Faulkner's ball was really curving there, and unfortunately for her, it curved out of bounds. There's a side out to the Wildcats. Brooklyn Osterlobe to set and serve. As Manny McClure will hit from the right side of the front row. Wildcats down by three as we're getting close to the magical 25. Osterville had a bunch of serves the last time in this rotation. And Graham not able to hit it over. Point Wildcats. This communication on that set by the Falcons. There, you take advantage of an air right there. If you're Minster, get a couple more points here. South, sophomore Osterlo. There's an ace there as a the pass did not go where anybody could get it. That's her second ace. So within one, 21-20, still in favor of the Graham Falcons. Oslo, nice serve. 
strong ace ties it up. Her third of the set. Really nice job there. Seemed like the last time she had a lot of serves. A lot of times it's not always about the server. It's also who you have in the front row. And they, right now, probably one of the stronger front rows there with McClurg, Innskeep, and Barhorst for the Wildcats. See who breaks the tie here. McIntosh is blocked back, back on the Minster side. Pranger tried to go quick. Macy Pranger steps in. Barhorst sailed a little bit long. Yeah. And the person you want to give it to in a 21-21 situation just sailed it long. So now 22-21. Graham on our first National Bank scoreboard. Taylor Mars with his serve. Overpass is put away there by McIntosh. That's a big point. As Graham now at 23. Yeah. And Graham has it. It's only like their fifth kill of this set. Oh, and that hit. Hemelgarn, I think she was trying to get out of the way and could not. And there will be another timeout by Coach Garman. We'll just keep it right here as it be set point for Graham. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Keyhole Pizza, Precision Strip, Carriage Works, Minster Bank, Lincoln Electric Automation, Winners Meats, Borchers Family Floor Center, and NK Telco. Our keys to the game were brought before the game. Was Keyhole brought by Keyhole Pizza, our timeout sponsor like this, brought to you by Precision Strip. Our game sponsor today is Borchers Family Floor Center. Brandon and I will pick a player of the game at the end of the broadcast. Right now, Coach Garman in this Precision Strip timeout trying to rally the troops. Their backs against the walls. It's game point for the Falcons. Yeah, a big ace there for Graham. And again, not too many kills this first set for Graham, but very efficient and a very athletic team. They have four aces. Taylor Mars served up by Pranger. The bar horse into the net. And the Graham Falcons take the first set, 25-21 on our first National Bank scoreboard. We'll come back, give you some numbers, and return here on NK Telco Sports. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant. Whatever it takes. Whether you do business from a corner store or a corner office, there is one asset your business cannot do without. The internet. Everything from sales and marketing, training and shipping, PR, HR, and R&D, your business relies on a fast, reliable, and secure connection. And now, it's more important than ever to partner with an internet provider you can trust. Get Flight Fiber for Business, backed by local tech support from NK Telco. Call today. Welcome back here. The first set goes to the Graham Falcons. They win 25-21 over the Minster Wildcats. Yeah, and taking a look at some of the stats here, you know, actually statistically, Minster leading kills in eight in, uh, in kills. They had six kills compared to the five from uh, Graham. Five aces for the Falcons to compared to four for the Wildcats, and they actually had one termination block for a point. So, I mean, statistically about pretty even there. Uh, but an interesting first set. You see Minster get down there early. They fought back, seesawed back and forth before Graham ultimately pulled away there later on in the first set. Uh, very athletic and quick teams on both sides that can really move around the gym very quickly. Uh, great first set here and the first weekend of volleyball here in all Ohio. Yeah, August 20th and good to get the season off and running. As always, there'll be some very good Mac and Shelby County League teams as Graham serves us to start us off in this second set. A little bit of scrambling by both teams. Quick set to Lamb, and she finds a spot. Kayla Lamb. Yeah, nice little spot hit there, and didn't call her name much that first set, but a good start for her. Good quick set there by Brooklyn Osterlo. She will exit out as the or rotate out as Lydia Mesher into the front row. And in the back row is the junior setter, Elena Pringer. 
Wildcats follow behind early in the first set. Right now just a 1-0 lead. Doug Gill by Graham. On the outside not able to hit it across. Two to nothing Wildcats. Coming off a 10 and 15 team. They had a lot of injuries last year. Slow start. Open to build, improve on that this year. Hit by Bocker. Will go long. Three to nothing Wildcats. And a good start. You take advantage of that air off to a better start than the first set. You can go quickly 3-0. Some of the players on last year's team, Alyssa Niemeyer. Jaden Clooney was a setter. Ella Mesher, very good front row player, but went, worked through some injuries. Put there in the kill there by Whitney Faulkner. Faulkner's second kill of the match. Faulkner last year was second team in their division. Camille McIntosh, number eight, was first team, so some good returnees. And a quick hit over there by Elena Pranger, and the setter records a kill. And there you go. A nice little, uh, you know, padding to the stats. So end of the game will be Lindy Hemmelgarn. Very good softball player, shortstop on her father's team. Rob Hemmelgarn, who became all-time leader in wins in softball this past spring. Very good softball program for Minnesota the last several years. Hit by Faulkner, good angle by the junior. Very athletic play that she can tort her body up there and hit that across the net. We always talk about that being a very difficult shot. You know, it's just well done. She rotates out, that brings in number eight, Camille McIntosh. It's that bar horse and she powers it. <laughs> that was nice. Faulkner was able to get arms on it, but it went way long. We have to have a radar gun on that one. I know. I was actually looking through some of my baseball gear this morning. I found a radar gun. I should have brought it. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Mr. Rack in action against Fort Larmy here. Brandon will be on the call as those two rivals there as Kayla Lamb. Powers an ace. Like we said, you know, what I said at the top of the broadcast is challenging yourself, obviously, in the MAC, but challenge yourself outside the MAC. Obviously, you're going to play Fort Lonnie right down the road, but playing Graham here, a very talented team, and you're showing you can compete with them here this second set here so far. Back to back aces there by the junior Kayla Lamb. 7 to 2 lead for the Wildcats on our first National Bank school board. She looks over Coach, Gar Coach Garman for the. That goes wide as, as all teams do. They have a signal what zone they want to serve it to. And I think she was trying for back corner. It just went a little bit too far in the corner. They tried it a few times, and it hit out each time, just missing it each time. Mars serve goes long. Actually, you talk about serving zones. I read an interesting article in the Daily Stand. Or I, was it the Daily Standard, maybe, where uh, Trisha Rosenbeck oh, yeah. and Knee Camp called the serving zones last year. She tore her ACL for St. Henry when they made their state appearance. She Pretty was, neat. She was just a sophomore, no, junior last yeah. year, and she had to give her give Coach Rosenbeck as there was a kill there for Graham. I give Coach Rosenbeck credit to. There's a way to involve an injured player. In, as part of the team and yeah. to have the confidence she just said wow she was so good at it I just let her do it and she probably, <laughs> she probably got one less thing for me to do exactly and that's uh, so me and Nick came back for her senior year against the St. Henry team defending state runners up lost to New Knoxville and they have a lot of as always they got a lot of talent coming back with her coming back that's a good start exactly Inskeep not able to find the corner Coach Trisha Rosenbeck, a longtime coach. Well, she succeeded Diana Kramer, who moved on to New Bremen. Bremen should be strong with fighting through some injuries this year. And, and again, always going to be a competitive MAC. Just nothing, nothing's going to change on that part. Anyone that knows MAC sports knows it's going to be competitive. It's going to be a dog fight to the end. Out of all the, as the ball host gets the kill, but out, out of all the girls sports, you know the, the MAC uh, in volleyball particularly is yeah. usually the deepest out of all. I thought it was an interesting. Coach Garman, when she gave her some comments, she said 
She thought the, the MAC has been the best it's ever been over the last five years. She expects to be the same, and that's true. It's always been good, but, wow, the last few levels is you have New Bremen was in the state final four straight years, and then New Knoxville went in the state last year. We will have a wildcat in the net there, so. And then Coldwater, we, uh, Coldwater's had a very good team. Versailles is one state. Fort Recovery's one state. Just, wow. Beat goes on, and you had Rushi and Fort Army and Anna out in, at the Shelby County League, and you got some good volleyball that we'll have on NK Telco Sports. Is, there's an ace there by Gretchen Boggs. As they close within two, nine to seven. Set across there to Fortman. Graham able to scramble, get it across. They'll set in keep. Another one that probably didn't make it above the net. It's always that balance between you want to be aggressive, but you don't want to make an unforced error, so to speak. You gave them an employee that way. Oh, there is a double hit. So the Wildcat lead is now is gone. As Boggs continues to serve. Pranger, there's ball horse in the back row, will go too long. And the lead now for Graham. Just been out of system these past couple times here on serve receive. You're trying, you know, it, it's not bad having ball horse up behind that 10 foot line, but she's not in the best spot to hit it. They have to do it that time again. And that was just a case that Osher doesn't have anywhere else to go with it. Exactly. It was like a, so Coach Garman will call a timeout. And we regroup, regroup and we head back after this precision strip timeout. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a better future. So coming out of this precision strip timeout by our coach Garmin, she finds her Wildcats after having a lead down by two. Just out of serve, out of system here a little bit. Oster low with that. Yeah. McCrory able to get that one across. Jewel will say. Faulkner, Whitney Faulkner with a nice kill. Her third of set to her fourth of the match. There's a difference between some, a team that was in system and not in system out of that play. Exactly. Wartman and Osterdo not able to get it. And a lot of this being caused by the serving of Gretchen Boggs. That's really key. You can get them out of the system how that first hit goes. Usually everything will follow. And when you can serve like that for a team that's not very tall like Graham, that helps out a ton too. They set over Fortman, blocked back, nice save by Pranger. They go back to Fortman. There is a much needed kill for the Wildcats. Yep, much needed, get a little confidence. Fortman's second kill of the match. It's about a six or seven point run there by the Falcons. Addie Innskeep now serving as Kayla Lamb rotates into the front row. She'll play the middle on the Fortman on the left and McClurg on the right. Wildcats need to get some momentum back. Big by Seti. Gould will set Falk to another big angle. She finds it just inside the line. Oh, must have. I thought it might have been a, just sailed out, but nice shot. Again, it's that angle shot that you, you talked about earlier today. That's so tough, but a nice, nice kill there. Tegan Seti serving. She's had a lot of service points today. There's a nice dig by Ball Horse right to Oshiro. She tries to dump it across, but Jewel was there. They set Faulkner. There's Oshiro. Backup setter. We'll set it to McClure, but that will go into the net. 15 to 10. As Graham has come from behind in this set. Ooh. There's the off the top of the net, the bleeder, if you will, for the ace by Seti. Her fourth ace. And Graham coming off a 21 and 5 record. Made it to the district for the second straight year. And there's another free ball they have to work with. Jewel will set Bocker. 
There to Lamb. Oh, check that. Fortman for the kill. Fortman bringing that one down. Nice job there. Her third kill. So Wildcats with the serve down by five is Lydia Mesher into the front row. Coming in to serve and to set be Elena Pranger. 16-11 looks over to the signal. Goes by Faulkner. Not able to make it across. Much need a point for the Wildcats. You go from here. You need, need another ace or just another big play. Get the energy up here for Minster. Trailing by four within striking distance here. Hit by Faulkner. There's a nice job by Pranger digging it out, but nobody able to get the second one. Side out will give it to the Falcons back with a five-point lead. Andrew Balker, one of three seniors on this team with a serve just long. Right in front of us. That's, that's so difficult, that play like that. It's like, do you go for it? Do you not? Because if it falls, you're like, well, dang it. But yeah. if you go for it, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Lindy Hemmelgarn will come in to serve for the Wildcats and play back row. Jewel will set. That was a set ball horse. She will go with the dink. Nice saves there by Graham to be able to get it over. Graham oh, tries to dump it over. That will fall off the block there at the, the tip there. Nice save in the middle there was Gretchen Boggs number 19 got that third hit across. And that's that's something that energizes you right there. Wow, what a play by Graham. Faulkner back to serve. Dug by Pranger. Pranger with the set and put away there by Kato Lamb on the wraparound. And that love that we call that like a yeah you call it a wraparound slide play that that execute you have to have good timing on that you know yeah. to be able to wrap around and time that set up and take it down nice job there by Lamb when you execute that perfectly it's it's about a, indefensible oh yeah it's uh because it's hard to get to the angle to block that's off the serve there Kayla Lamb with a big ace see off the net see something little silly like that to happen you get that nice slide play there. And there you go. You got a little momentum now. If you're Minster, it's just seizing it and getting on a run here and keep building point by point. New volleyball into the game is Junior Lamb. Back by Seti Jewel. Mars couldn't get the angle. Wildcats within two. 18 to 16 on our first National Bank scoreboard. The first set. One to the Falcons, 25-21. They lead one set to nothing. Jewel will set McIntosh. Brainer will set Barhors for the point. There you go. You get that little bleeding tape shot there. And now a timeout here by Graham. We'll step aside and we'll head back on NK Tucker Sports. We are here. And here and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Welcome back out of this precision strip timeout called by Graham, Coach Carafa, Wildcats within the one. And yeah, a little bleeder tape shot, a kill by your, your best hitter, Lily Barhorse, and you're right back within this thing. If you're Minster, try to seize that momentum out of the timeout. Jewel will set Faulkner from the back row. She's not able to hit it across, and we are tied at 18. And you take advantage of those little miscommunications that Graham has made, too. They've ran into each other a couple times. They ran into each other there in the back row. And again, just hang around, and they're tying the score back up. Lamb, that one sails long. Gives the lead back to the Falcons. Taylor Mars, Jr., the lefty with the serve. Couple lefty servers on this team, along with Seti. 
It was good serve, able to get across. They will call a lift or an illegal hit. By Pringer, oh, they're gonna replay that. I thought the lift was gonna be called. Yeah, it's tough hit there in second. Kim Hegbert, the head official, saw something. She said, okay, I either missed that or we gotta replay it, so. Like it didn't happen. Bar horse. Good hang time and power to boot. Well, I guess ball don't lie is what they say. So yeah. the, that's the seventh kill of the match for Bar Horse. We are at 19 to 19. Manny McClurg into the front row number 22 in Brooklyn. Oster, though, this has been a rotation as yielded some points for the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. Nice serve, and that just dropped. On cue there, Dave, you said that, and I was ag agreeing with you there, and Osterlo has had a quiet, nice game. Her fourth ace. So Wildcats retake the lead for the first time since early in the contest, early in this game, I should say. Backs up to McIntosh, and she's a nice hitter. Nice hit off the right side there. Her second kill of the game. She was first team in their division in the Central Buckeye Conference. We are tied at 2020. An old news show from the ABC days. I think it's still going on 2020. <laughs> Jewel with the serve, Pranger. The Osterlo takes the safe thing to hit it over. Second hit over, there's Hemelgarn. Osterlo will set bar horse. Takes a little bit off of it and messes up the blocking timing. Timing. Big kill there by Ballhorst. Eight of them now for her, and she goes back into service. Megan Fortman will rotate into the front row. She'll hit from the left side. Kevin McClurk from the right side, Innskeep in the middle. Wildcats clinging to a one-point lead, trying to even up this match. Jewel, that is blocked back on the Falcon side, hit across by Faulkner. Quick one to Fortman, all the way over, McIntosh with a big hit. Yep, and they're starting to get her involved a little more now. Hits out of that left front there. Nice job by McIntosh, we're tied back at 21. She rotates out in favor of Gretchen Boggs. That puts Whitney Faulkner into the front row, number 22. They're two big hitters, and we're tied at 21. The club from the right side, off the blockers. Nice save by Seti. Dink, nice save by Barhorse, but put away there by Bocker. Yeah, great effort by Barhorse there, but unfortunately just overpassed, and it's not much you can do about that. Coach Garman will take the time out. That was given an opportunity to thank some of our sponsors. They're the ones that make these telecasts possible. Some of our additional sponsors today, Burke Petroleum, Chiltex, And also, Sy Schrudeman Incorporated out in Knoxville, Dickman Supply, Grand Lake Health, Hometown Opportunity, Hillsman Automotive, Park National Bank, Pratt, Industries, Securecom, St. Henry Bank. Again, this, sponsor, this time out by sponsored by Precision Strip and our first National Bank scoreboard. Graham is now leading by one in the second set. Yeah, it's been a good back and forth battle. And again, just seeing who pulls away here and who strings together a couple points is always what it comes down to when it gets this tight this late in the set. Gretchen Boggs is sophomore, back row player. It's a critical point. It could be tied at 22, or Graham could have a two-point lead. That oh, just hits the line. As Foreman let it go, it looked like we don't have the best angle now. It looked like it was going to sail long and it, or sail wide and it, like it curved back in. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Big ace by Boggs. Second one, a little mix up, and he has it. Borrowers from way back, and that sails wide, and we have set point for Graham. A little tough miscommunication between Inskeep and Barhorse there. Set point by Boggs. They go to Inskeep. Osterlo will set Barhorse. And that will go too long. Back and forth, second set goes in favor of the Graham Falcons. They have won both sets by this identical score of 25-21. So they take a two-set to none lead. We'll step aside and return with the third set on NK Toko Sports. 
New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Welcome back here to Minster. We're about ready to start the third set. First two have gone in favor of the Falcons. 25-21 on both sets. Here were some numbers. My partner today, Brandon Coverman. Yeah, again, pretty close on the stats there. Graham edges out and kills with 11 to 10 uh, compared to Minster. They're both equal on aces with four. Haven't had too many termination blocks or points uh, so far in this game. Actually, only one total by each of uh, the two teams to the first uh, two sets. But again, both sets have played pretty similar. Graham's got a little bit of a jolt at the end of each of the first two sets of kind of distance themselves in the Wildcats here. Now with the Wildcats with their backs against the wall, I've, I've liked what I've seen out of Minster. They're playing, a, like I said, a really good team uh, to start off the season. And, and You talked about it earlier. Coach Garman is bringing in a lot of girls uh, to try to see kind of where they fit, and I, I think they've done well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a tough uphill climb here, but they're capable of doing it. They've been hanging around in both sets. Yeah, the, there's been some bright spots, but just not the consistency from point to point. And they, you know, we talked about they have four returning starters, but they also graduated seven seniors. So it's fitting the new roles, getting everybody comfortable. Yeah, they had the preseason, but it's not quite the same as the regular season and uh, trying to see where everybody fits. And, and it's just the little things about when you pass it, where, you, where the setter is exactly, yeah. the timing between it. And it's a... Uh, you know, that's why you play 22 games during the regular season. Yeah, and it's not a conference game to start either, so you're learning your stuff before you get into all important MAC action as well. So served by Pranger Long to start us off. First set, Graham took the lead, and the second set, Minster took the lead, but it's been back and forth both of these games, very competitive, and Graham's just pulled away when it needed. The four-point wins in both sets. Hit across there, and Minster gets a break. As Megan Portman just pushed it across, and Graham had some miss hits. As Lindy Hemmelgarn will come in to serve. One of just two seniors on this team, along with Kylie Williams, but she was the only, Hemmelgarn was the only one who played varsity last year as Libero. There's a hit by Mars, and that went off of the blocker. Mars second kill of the match here. Emil Garn, Prangler set bar horse. Able to dig that across. Hit by their setter. Bar horse there will get the kill. Good adjustment in the air by bar horse. There. We were tied at two. Addie Inskeep into the front row. She'll play middle. It's Kayla Lamb the other middle with the serve. Nice serve. Graham scrambling, able to go to the cross. Pranger will set bar horse for the kill. And that left front is just her best spot. I and mean, it's just where where she's most effective, so. And she's done a really nice job out of there. That is her 10th kill of the match. Double digits. Kills for the junior bar horse. There's Seti from the back row. Nice save by Hemmelgarn. They'll set bar horse again, and why not? Use it, abuse it in that rotation. So four to two. Graham Falcons, they, they graduate their setter from last year, Dina Wilson. She was first team in their division. But they have Faulkner and McIntosh are also all glue of honors back. So more experienced team than Minster. Battle at the net. They'll set Faulkner, and there's a block by Inski. A nice job there. Great timing. She has done a nice job today so far for Minster. Five to two Wildcats on our first National Bank school board. First National Bank, 
think first. Lamb tried to put a little bit more on that one. It sails into the net. The barrel Macy Pranger rotates back in as Faulkner to the back row. That'll bring in their other big hitter, Camille McIntosh. She's a senior. Faulkner just a junior. There's a hard serve dug by Barhorst. Mesher gets an opportunity there, and she hits it off the blockers for the kill. It's her first of the match. She hits that right side, and when you're on that right side, you just don't get the opportunities usually. Just, just a matter, matter of almost physics. It's just harder to hit from that side. You naturally hit from the left side. And into the game number 16, Hannah Oldig is seeing her first action, the junior. She'll go on the right side. She's able to hit it off the block. Now back on the Falcons' side. Mars, there's a wildcat into the net. I haven't really saw too many in the net lifts so far. For the first game of the season, yeah. haven't haven't saw too many called as, as I think you would typically see in the first game of the season. I'd say there's been less than five of each, and there's a nice ace there by Mars. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Usually at this point, especially the hits, we've had some good serves today. A double hit's always tricky. Ursulo, the inscape with a nice kill. And she's piecing together a nice third set and trying to keep Minster alive. And only a sophomore. And like you said, just I like what I'm seeing out of this young team here so far. Back to serves ball horse. Fortman rotates in, will hit from the left side. Duel sets Faulkner, and she's not able to hit it from the back row. You know, Brandon, I don't know if you had the opportunity to see Paige Jones back in the day. Oh, yeah. Her day and <laughs> oh, yeah. She was the one who took it to that level, hit from the back row. She was a force from that back row. When she would jump, though, she literally would jump, and she'd be in the air. She did that ten foot line. It yeah. felt like she landed about the five foot spot. Oh, I know. She was unbelievable from the back row and a great career at Michigan as well. And uh, she joined Diana's staff at uh, yeah. Greenman, which you know not a not a bad addition if you want to you know you know piece together a great program like New Bremen has these past few years and just add to the knowledge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where it started yeah. when Coach Kramer came on board, and I think. Paige Jones was a senior that year, set a record for most kills in the state semifinal game, I think, yeah. or something like that. And just on, on top of about everything else, unbelievable season. And New Green has just picked up the pace since that time. Battle at the net and a nice push there by Inskeep, able to find the spot. She's had a great third set here so far. Nine to seven as Minster retains their lead. The, grabbed early. Skinski back to serve. The other middle hitter, Lamb, into the front row. Dug by Seti. Duel will set McIntosh. There's Inski. Osterlo will back set to Oldigas. Block back. Osterlo goes over on the second one. All the way over to McIntosh. Alcott scrambling, able to get it across. In the middle, there was Bacher, one of the longer volleys we've had today. Bacher, now pushed. And I think the last person to hit there, there was Fortman, the Wildcats. Minsky, or no, Lamb was there as well. More importantly, a 10 to 7 lead for the Wildcats. Again, trying to keep it pedal to metal. I don't think they've really led by much more than four. At any point any, uh, of any sets, I mean, all the games have been close so far. I don't know, either team. I think Graham made it out of a five point at one time, and there's going to be a lift on Graham. And there is a four point lead. 11 to 7. Inskeep. Seems like had a little momentum, and that momentum gets the energy going, and, and volleyball is all about momentum. Is that. Kills the momentum, it goes long. We've had a fair share of missed serves by both teams. Yeah, and and again, it's the first game of the season. It's it's an easy excuse to pull out, we'll say, yeah. for anybody in any sport. Only gets good angle there. Duel pumps it over to Seti. There's Barhorst. 
Ostrolo will set Fortman the left side. Hit the, Hit the pole. You know, we talk about the bad serves is like, all right, you say his first game, but it's, also, it's always that risk-reward. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be aggressive serving, but you're going to have to accept some bad serves as well with that. Bar horse. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> She just powered it over the tape of the net. <laughs> I think it dropped her almost on this side because it spun around the net. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the angle she took initially, I was like, I don't think she's going to get that over. And then just the luck of the tape, you know, sometimes you say it's better to be lucky than good. And she and Coach Grumman will take that as Elaine Pranger rotates in and serves it long. Twelve to ten. In. Get across there. Hit by Faulkner. Bump. That will go wide. Long, so a lot of scrambling there goes in favor of the Wildcats. I mean, heck of a job by Barhorse there, just kind of looking and tracking and finding the line and just not touching that ball at all. Great net play by the Cats. 13 to 10. Lindy Hemmelgarn trying to keep it going for the Wildcats. Off the tape and falls. There you go. She, she got a front row view of Barhorse hitting it before, so... That is another hit that is indefensible. Exactly. <laughs> if you could only do that. And then, as is almost predicted, sometimes you hit that net the next time. Okay, I'm not going to hit the net this time. Uh, I mean, usually your momentum's sitting low looking for that ball. So once you see it hit the tape, you're thinking, you're kind of leaning back. And then when it falls, you're like, oh, I'm trying to get the ball there in a second. Bar horse powers it through the blockers. Her fifth kill already this set. And she has 13 of them, a Baker's dozen already. Kate Lamb back to serve as Addie Innskeeper rotates in off the top of the tape. There's Seti. And now it's now it's five point lead, and we talk about teams being in system, out of system. Coach for Graham is uh, out of system right now. Carafa will take the time out. We'll be right back. been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. We're in the third set. The Graham Falcons coming out of this precision strip timeout. They lead the set two to nothing. The Wildcats clinging to a five-point lead here in the third set. And again, you talked about it before the break, them being out of system, Graham. Uh, so to be, and that's credit from the Wildcats. They've done a nice job uh, keeping Graham out of system and not an ideal. He'll start out of the timeout there with the miss serve. So Whitney Faulkner will go back to serve for the Falcons, the 21-5 Falcons from last year. So definitely a very good team with a good amount of returnees, including Faulkner. Pranger will set Mesher. Setty with a hit. Dewey will set Faulkner. Wildcats scrambling. Hit across there on the second hit by Pranger. She finds the spot. And you do that to, again, mix up the looks. You know, you're expecting everyone to go on three, go on two hits right there, and unexpectedly have that little, uh, you know, dump pass there and get a kill out of it. And Ole gets in the front row is Brooklyn Osterloh. 
He's got a lot of good serving runs for the Wildcats today. Hit by McIntosh. Hemmelgarn will set Barhorse. Stein right inside the line. And Barhorse continues to heat up. And Dave, you said it. Minster's been in system right there. It was easy going because they're in system. It's Osterlo serving with a six point lead. And that one, probably the first miss serve she's had ever after a whole bunch of them wow. between the three sets. And there's an ace there by Mars, Taylor Mars, and that ball was moving. Yeah, very well. 18 to 14. There's been the part of the game that Graham has won at. They, but at this point in the game, usually they were ahead 18 to 14 instead of trailing 18-14. Oh, he just touched it. Oh, ooh. Looked like it almost was in, but no. No. And I think they were more or less wanting a touch. So 18 to 15, served by Mars Pranger. Hit across by Barhorst. Back set to McIntosh. That will go down and fall. Big point there for the Wildcats. Falcons are just starting to get some momentum going. The big answer now. Barhorst is into the back row as Megan Fortman fellow Jr. into the front row on her L. Left spot, hard serve right at. Put there by Johnson, good save by Barhorst. Wildcats able to scramble and get it across. That will fall, nice save by Pranger on the Falcon side. Johnson will go wide and a big point, 20th point for the Wildcats. And that's huge there again. Minster hasn't really led by four or five much here so far. Now trying to seize the momentum here and close this game out. Usually whoever gets to 20, I think, usually wins like 80% of the time. Unbelievable amount of time. Still got to get to 25 to officially win it. We got five away. There's Barros with another big. She led the team in bigs last year as well as kills. Wildcats able to free ball that across. Good with set McIntosh. There's playing with a nice save. Ball horse is just hitting across here. Step up by Faulkner. Duel hits it over on two. Oster low. Falk Fortman blocked back at her. And I think McIntosh won with a block for the Falcons, number eight. Yep, he'd be right there. So the Falcons not going down without a fight. Is their setter, Addy Duell, will be serving and setting from the back row. That means they have three hitters in the front row. Bar horse with a dig. And there is Bacher just waiting there on the second hit to block it back. Right place, right time. 20 to 17. Put there by Fortman. That will sail long. 20 to 18. And a block and an air there. Just relax here and breathe a little bit if you're the Wildcats. Do with the serve. Second hit will go back to Barhorse. She's just able to barely get it across. McIntosh is blocked by Holigus. Osterlo hits it over for the kill. Nice play. Not just by Osterlo, but good job by Oligas to dig it out. Yeah, great uh, just defense overall there by Minster. You know, Osterlo getting the kill. She's had a nice game so far. Sadly, Setter getting a kill. Big kill there is Inks keep a little bit of trouble with the dribble. Now resets. And that one goes into the net. So, ooh. We call a, a rotation error? I think so. Because the whistle blew awful quick. I yeah. thought it was like before the net, and they usually wait till it hits the net. So a break there stretches the lead to four for the Wildcats. And there's the ace. Wow, what a turn of events there. And it makes it what could have been a 21-19 ball game, 23-18. And now that sounds a lot more comfortable for Minster. 
So out of it be a timeout, precision strip timeout. We'll be right back on NK Tokyo Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Coming out of the Precision Strip timeout is Graham trying to cling here and try to win it in three. But the Wildcats, two points away from victory here in the third set. And you get a little rotation air there from Graham, which was huge for the Wildcats to help distance themselves out here right now, trying to close out the third set. Olgis dumps it over on two, and Hannah Olgis, I think you call that a kill there. Yeah. As uh, she was able to, couldn't go anywhere else with it, so nice job by the junior Olgis, and we were at set point for the Wildcats. Inskeep with the serve. McIntosh, duel. All the way over to Bocker into the net. And the Wildcats take the third set. They stay alive in this match. Match is now two sets to one, still in favor of Graham, as both teams will reset at their bench. We'll be back with the fourth set on NK Toko Sports. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant. Whatever it takes. Welcome back here. The Wildcats recover in the third set. They win 25-18 to force a fourth set. And uh, uh, some of the numbers here by Mr. Brandon. And really, you see why Minster dominated that set. Only four kills, three aces, two blocks for Graham and Minster. I had 12 kills, two aces, and two blocks. So, I mean, really statistically for Minster, taking control of that third set, Lily Barbaros with a handful of kills, uh, Addy Inskeep, nice set, Megan Fortman, uh, Brooklyn Osterlow, all those guys making plays to keeping uh, the black and orange alive here and forcing a fourth set. You saw them hang around and compete those first two sets pretty well, and they come back and, and fought and forced a set four, which... I'm sure it's, it's good for Coach Garman to see her young team fight. Falcon start us off. Holding us from the right side with a hit. Mars will be short on the dink. First point goes to the Wildcats. Kind of interesting that like Olga's, Olga's coming out here, but she started the set and she didn't really play till last the third yeah. set. I think he said so. Changing up her starting rotation a bit. Kami Garman going with what's been working. Yeah, Oligas played all JB last year. She was the left hitter last year, if I remember right. But, yeah, she's sparked him a little bit there in the third set as Elena Pranger in to serve. And that will go out of bounds. So 2-0 lead on our first National Bank scoreboard. First National Bank, a longtime scoreboard sponsor at NK Telco Sports. We appreciate their support along with all the sponsors make these NK Telco Sports possible. Hit by Faulkner. Nice dig by Pranger. Foreman with a good power, but that's hit right back. Ball horse hits it across. And Faulkner's kind of, lost, kind of had the wrong angle. She tried to go down the line. And that's a point for the Wildcats, 3-0. Lena Pringer, junior setter, her in Brooklyn Osterloh. Two setters in this, what you, they call a 6-2 offense. Being two setters and everybody else is a hitter. 
That won't make it across in a 4-0 lead for the Wildcats. Again, out of system right there. Good service by Minster. I think sometimes we try to make the game a little more complicated, but a lot of coaches talking about be, talk about being in system as being the most important thing that they need from their team. And when the one team's out of system, it's a lot easier for the other team to be out of system. There's a chance for the Wildcats off the free ball as ball horse from the back row. Tried to dink it. Not enough there. The serve and the first hit is so critical on if you're in system or not. There's Fortman in system there to Pranger to Lamb and that one just too long. I think coaches will generally take it to still look good. You're not going to hit every serve, every spike. And that one cleared all over the place and that goes just outside. I think they were surprised it was out. It wasn't even close. Yeah. I mean, it hit the little black square yeah, back square that I think I was looking at the angle. It wasn't really long because uh, it was long. We're in this. We're in the end zone seat, so to speak, in this camera well. So down that line, we got a pretty good view of it. And Kayla Lamb blocks it there on a whole bunch of people in the net there for a 6-2 lead. Minster's first kill as a team in this set. Ace by Lindy Hemelgarn. And boy, the momentum has switched in this match. Oh yeah, and that's her second ace, too. It's all been in the service game, I believe, for Minster. And they haven't, I mean, and they, and they played really efficient that third set, too. I mean, 12 kills to Graham's four. Hit by Faulkner. Hemelgarn, ball horse. In the net. Another wildcat in the net. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they call ball horse there. It's, she's kind of glared at the official. <laughs> I thought she might have ran into it on her yeah. on her run up there because she kind of you know had to halfway poke it over. So side out to Graham is Whitney Faulkner. Very jun good junior and all around hitter for the Falcons as ball horse hit goes in the net. Seven to four. Wildcats be back in action next week against here against Fort Army, and then on Saturday against Sydney. Brandon has a game on Tuesday. I have it on Saturday. There's a nice ace there by Faulkner. It's too hot to handle. So again, all our home games will be on our key motion on NK Toko Sports. So if you get a subscription or you want to just an individual game, sign up at NK Toko. Dot com. A little bit of out of system here for the Wildcats as there's a point for the Falcons in and out within one. That was McIntosh there dumping that away. Said McIntosh and Faulkner's name a lot on this Falcon team and Faulkner with some hard serves right now. Of course is a free ball for the Wildcats. There's McIntosh. Yankee Senior hits it across. Nice save by Helmgarn. And a nice spot there by Lamb. It's like real estate, location, location, location. I was thinking that too. And that's Lamb's fourth kill of the game. As Caitlin moves back to the back row to serve. Addie Inskeep into the front row to play the middle spot. And that she almost hit her teammate there on the serve. Macy Pranger, the libero, number four in the black jersey. Back in is Taylor Mars, serve for the Falcons. Emma Garn bumps it. They set bar horse and good hang time. And the kill follows. Her first kill is set for 14 of them now for her. You know, I think it's interesting with, uh, with bar horse. She has the, when you look at it, you think, oh, she must be a middle hitter. And early in the year last yeah. year, they put her a middle hitter. And somewhere along, they switched to out, outside hitter. And she has so much hitting ability. I think that's why it was. And where the middle blockers are usually more blockers than they are hitters. And yeah. She's done well today, that's for sure. She digs that one. He'll set her back and hammers it. That's what you call a vertical hit. That was straight down. Put a dent into the ground. Yeah, that was good set there by Brooklyn Osterlo as well as... 
Every good spike usually needs a good set. Wildcats back up by three. There's McIntosh trying to hit off the right side. And we'll have another timeout on the floor. But Coach Carafra will be right back on NK Tucker Sports. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a better future. We are here and here and here. Minster Bank is everywhere providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank helping people achieve financial success. Welcome back, coming out of the Graham timeout, sponsored by Precision Strip. And, the, and there's a hit there in the kill, there by Mazzy Johnson. And a nice little job there, and getting system there by Graham. And they've been a little befuddled, so to speak, by, by uh, Minster serving ability these last few sets. And that's what's helped Minster get back in this game. Duel with the serve. Quick set to Inskeep. Nice save there by Seti. Johnson not able to hit it in. Side out a point for the Wildcats. And just scratch and claw here to 25 if you're Minster. And if you get to game number five, it starts over and it's just a race to 15. 12 to 8. Lily Barhorse serves it up. And then the ace. That one dropped at the last minute for the ace. It's always interesting when we have this end zone view. Really like how you can see the serves, how much they move. And exactly. You see some first hits. It's like, why couldn't they hit it? Well, that ball's going left and right and up and down. Like that one as well. That went off a shoulder. And these are high school kids that are in there best shape of their life they play a lot of volleyball it's just like seeing a good change up in baseball you look at it you know you look at it from a, a stance point you're like how can you hit that and then you look at it and you're like oh man it's running across the plate yeah no wonder he couldn't hit that ball horse back to back aces this time Seti from the back row ball horse bumps it but that goes wide Graham's been a nice job of hitting that middle open which is usually that middle spot which is normally just usually open in any volleyball team. You have to cover that. And Osterlow to Fortman, blocked. Graham able to hit it over with Seti. Barhorse to Osterlow, over on two. There's Faulkner, Pranger with the dig. Osterlow in the middle to Innskeep. Seti will push it over. Set to Olius. Bumped out by Seti. They'll go to Faulkner. Nice volley going on here. And Addie Inski gets the last hit. And I think she's kind of laughing at herself because she didn't hit that as hard as she wanted to, I don't think. And she kind of whiffed at it a bit, I think. And I think she jumped too early. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was off on her timing, but it ended up working. That's why I think she was laughing there a bit. It's amazing how many have these off hits. It messes up the blocker, too. You messed up their timing as that serve goes in the net. And... Sometimes the perfect bump set spike doesn't always work because the other team's waiting for it as well. So exactly. Wildcats still doing pretty good in this fourth set with a five-point lead as Foreman with a big power hit. And she's done a nice job out of that left front, too, whenever Barhorse has been in the back row. That's Sportman's sixth kill. And what I remember, I think Megan played mostly middle or right side. So that's a big switch to go to the left side where you're going to do a lot of hitting compared to the other side. You're not doing near the hitting. You're doing more blocking. And like you said, she's gotten, seems like as a match has gone on, she's gotten more comfortable with that. 
as Elena Pranger now in to serve and set. Faulkner blocked back. Mesher, Olivia Mesher with the overpass puts it away. Second kill of the match for Mesher. 17 to 10. If you would have just came across the game right now, you'd watch as though, oh, Minster probably has won this match pretty easy as it has switched from the first two sets where Graham won both in 25-21. Lamb with the hit and the falls. And like you said, Dave, volleyball is all about momentum, and Minster's got it right now. Seems like if you win the first two, if you let the other team in it, it's hard to get that match that back. And all of a sudden, you're playing five sets when you thought you'd be out of here in three. And there's Faulkner with a big angle shot. And like, people don't realize how crazy athletic you have to do to, to, to execute a shot like that. And they've actually, Mr. Shut Down Faulkner, she had five kills in set two. And she's really been quiet other, other than that. And the right side is Fortman. The kill on that slide play is... She'll rotate out. She had a very nice run there in the front row. She did. And they replace her in the front row with Ms. Barhorst. And Lindy Hemelgar now in for the serve. Barhorst, I think the only player that plays all the way around in this Minster rotation. If I, I'm pretty sure everybody else is rotated out, other than, of course, the libero. As Hemelgarn with the serve with an eight-point lead. Faulkner, nice save by Hemelgarn. Barhorst will have to just hit it over, but she put some good topspin on it for a flat-footed kill. And her third kill of this set to go along with two aces. 20 to 11, Minster five points away from evening this match and going to the accelerated fifth game at 15 points. Seti from the back row. Mesher back on the Falcon side. Faulkner, there's Pranger. It's been a nice job of finding the spot to dig it. Faulkner blocked by Mesher. And the point. Mesher, also Lamb there. And Mesher got most of that one. Yep. And that's who I'll credit that block to. Mesher, a junior, one of several juniors on this team. Five. It's like eight or nine juniors. I'd have to count it exact. And there's an ace by Hamilton. 22 to 11. It's just a matter of time before we go to the fifth set here. The match on the first two games to Graham, and then Minster's won this, the third set, and looks they're on their way on the fourth set. They set Mesher from the right side, and Lydia with a kill. And she's come along there playing a little bit now and didn't play much to begin with, and now her third kill of the game. Yeah, they've got some hitting from that right side, Oligus as well, and really they've got the offense rolling here in the third and fourth set. Yeah, we're going to try to keep it going here and finish it off. And that will go over the, the Falcons. McIntosh into the game as Faulkner back to serve. 23 to 12 though, the Wildcats in complete control of this set. That was a tough serve. Pranger chases it down. Ball horse able to get it across. There's McIntosh. And that will be a kill. As we had a touch yep. there as Hemelgarn had to try to hit it. Did a good scramble there by the Wildcats. Yeah, it's fun to watch them all run back, <laughs> trying to get in position desperately before Graham got their third hit. The junior Whitney Faulkner off the top of the tape for the bleeder. Indefensible, like you said, that's hard. That's more sometimes, like you said, just luck. <laughs> getting that little bleeder to fall over. It's luck if it goes against you, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Barhorst off the blockers. Brother Barhorst takes the Wildcats to set point. It's Kayla Lamb will try to finish it off for the Wildcats as Innkeep rotates into the front row.
McIntosh will bump it. Back to McIntosh. Dug by Lamb. In the back row, it's Hemmelgarn with the swing. Side out to the Falcons. Taylor Mars trying to keep the Falcons alive. Down by nine. And no room for error. And Barhorse finishes off a fourth set. We will go and play five as the Wildcats win on our first National Bank scoreboard 25 to 15. We're all even at two. They will do a flip to see who serves here in the fifth set. And we'll be back for the deciding fifth set on NK Toko Sports. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. We go to the deciding fifth set. We are all even at two games apiece. And stat-wise there, again, Minster dominates that set there. And pretty easy. You can tell why on the stat sheet why they dominated. 12 kills compared to Graham's five and four aces for Minster compared to Graham's two. So, I mean, Minster, for the first two sets were staying statistically even with Graham, so to speak. And then they, they really busted this game open and tie it up to go into the fifth set and just credit the, the fight in the well on day one with a great opponent here in your own gymnasium in Graham. And Minster gets the serve. They won the flip to play this 15-point fifth set. Elena Pranger will start it off. A good start is crucial in this 15-point set. Nice dig by Pranger. And the net. we will have somebody in the net. It looks like there was a Wildcat that brought it down. And a lamb. I think it's one I could call it on. So Seti will serve with a 1-0 lead. And that will go. Good job there by Pranger playing dodgeball, if you will, and got out of the way at the last minute. So not only gives it the one that puts Barhorse into the front row, she starts in the back row. Lindy Hemmelgarn serving in the front row. We have Kayla Lamb and also Lydia Mesher. Hemmelgarn with the serve and an ace. And there you go. Another ace for Hemmelgarn. Two to one. Who will win their first match of the season? You got 21 more after that, but Sure is fun to win that first one. That one goes long. And if you're Graham, that's a long bus ride to St. Paris. Yeah. If you were up two sets to nothing and lose it. Not just for the players, but the parents as well, as that goes long. You can see that one going out from that, like I said, the nice view that we have. Lamb to serve, Innskeep into the front row with Mesher and Barhorst. Doug by Seti, duel. We'll set it there to Faulkner, and a good hit from the right side by Whitney Faulkner. We're tied at three. I think the intensity level is picking up a little bit here for this deciding set. Faulkner, there's a nice dig by Hemmigarn. Over to Mesher on the right side through the blockers, and Lydia Mesher has made the most of her opportunities in the last few sets. She's come on strong here. 
And that's her fourth kill of the match. She will be replaced by Hannah Oligoso going in the front row to play the right side in Brooklyn Osterlo. Sophomore setter coming in with a 4-3 lead on our first National Bank school board. Dug by Setty. Set McIntosh, that will go long. Five to three. Coach Carafa for the Falcons. Coach Garmin for the Wildcats. Played by McIntosh. Ooh, little mix up there on the second hit. Five to four. It's always when that second hit doesn't go where the setter is supposed to be. Is the setter going to take it or somebody going to help her out? And it was in between on that one. Hamagarn, Osterlo, holding this from the left side. Hit there by Johnson, finds a spot. And just a gap in the defense there. And pretty easy. Uh, just took a little off it. And then a big hole in that defense there. Five to five, Mars with the serve. Pranger, Osterlo, nice set there to Bar Horse. That's a great back set to Bar Horse there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the timing seemed off there. If she tried to dink it over like that, but it worked out. So a good recovery and a nice set out as Bar Horse down to the front row or to the back row as Fortman rotates in. Back set, there will be a double hit there. Seven to five. He setters, and that's Addie Duell has been setting all the way around. You handle the ball a lot of times. Every once in a while, you're going to make an error. Exactly. Bar horse short on the serve. Johnson over that one around the antenna. The line judges today were graduated from last year. Jaden Clooney on our left here and Alyssa Niemeyer on the right side. Probably a different feeling from them to just watch. And there's an ace by Ball Horse. Finds a wide open spot. It's a nice way to give back to the kind of the program. Yeah, probably both of them will be leaving for college, I'm guessing, next week. And time out on the floor. For the Falcons, we'll be right back here on NK Toko Sports. This for Susan Strip timeout. The Wildcats with a nine point lead as the Lee Ball Horse continues to serve. Again, the five fifth set is just a 15 point. And there's another tough serve. It's put it in a tough place for the Falcons to handle. The Wildcats up by five. And that's the second ace of the set. Welcome back here to Minsters. The fans are firing out. They saw a very good match here to start off the volleyball season. Five set affair. Graham started out 125 to 21 the first two sets, but Minster turned it around. They won the final three sets, 25-18, 25-15, and 15 to 8. Minster will now 1 and 0 in the season. They will play Fort Army here at Minster. We will have that on our key motion. Brandon will be on the call, and Graham will fall to 0 and 1 on the season for our final numbers Mr. Brandon Coverman and just tallying them up here going through Graham 28 kills 9 12 14 aces for Graham and a, a two blocks for Minster they had 16 28 40 and 43 kills uh, 6 8 12 16 aces and three term four termination blocks for points uh, led kill wise there by, by Lily Barhorst, who just had a, a fantastic game with 7, 11, 15, 16 kills. Uh, Kayla Lamb had a nice game with 5 kills. You also talk about Megan Fortman. Fortman had 
uh, seven kills as well. So a nice overall, I mean, game by Minster. You know, kind of those first couple sets they were they were tight and close, but Graham pulled away at the end, and then Minster just fought back and and dominated those last three sets. I mean, they weren't even close. Yeah, we talked about you know they're a young team, graduated seven seniors, had some experience coming back, and just seemed like it found a little bit before they got in system and got that offense going and and clicking and. Uh, a good turnaround and a good first win for the Wildcats. And a lot of good players successful there. We had talked about a lot of hitters, but our player of the game today, we're going to go with one of the setters. Had a lot of big hits and a lot of big service runs. Southmore, Brooklyn, Osterloh. Yeah, four aces, two kills. Again, setters don't get a lot of the glory when it comes to, uh, let's say, a hitter, a front row hitter, an outside hitter. And uh, she played a nice game today. It's just a sophomore. This is going to be a fun, exciting team. Uh, you challenge yourself, you get a big win to start the season. I mean, to beat a Division II team, the quality of Graham, and now you got always the always powerful 14-time defending district champions, Fort Army, coming into this gymnasium here on Tuesday. So, I mean, you're challenging yourself right away, and Coach Garman and her team, nice job today with the comeback win. Glad you're aboard here to watch us on, El on NK Toko Sports. My partner, Brandon Coverman, I'm Dave Kanapke. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend on NK Toko Sports.